yesterday. Thanks to our supportive Kickstarter backers, we got to release to retail the Tales from the Loop, the board game. Uh, it's a cooperative board game for one to five players. It's super, super awesome. It's got some great miniatures. If you love Simon Stallenhog's work, yeah, you'll definitely have to check it out. But we wanted to celebrate uh, the, the retail release, and we thought maybe we'd bring on the designer of the game, Martin Takeichi, and talk a little bit about it. We'll have to talk about it for about 30, 30 minutes to 40 minutes uh, and take some com uh, community questions. We'll talk about Martin's design process. We'll talk about maybe potential plans for this board game. But before we do all that, I'm going to ask that if you are a fan of the Tales from the Loop and just Tales from the Loop, the board game, and, and you appreciate Martin coming on and giving his time, please hit that like button down below. I would really greatly appreciate that. And if you're coming across our content for the very first time, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you part of our YouTube community here. Uh, we love to uh, interact with everyone that, that supports and loves what we do, and uh, it is greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's bring on the designer of the Tales from the Loop board game, Martin Takichi. Martin, Hello. thank you so much for giving your time today. Well, thank you for having me. I mean, I see we're neighbors, right? It's we like, are, we are. We I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just down the road from you. <laughs> Hi. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course, of course. You know, snowy Sweden, uh, the cooling towers, everything is good. Uh, awesome. Yeah. No, but it's it's fun being here. It's going to be uh, interesting to to see what people uh, have, what kind of questions they have uh, lined up for me. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, congratulations on on the retail release of this game. This is a, a little bit a little bit of time coming, uh, so <sighs> it must be really rewarding to finally see it out in the open and you know available for everyone uh, to uh, pick up and and put up on their tables. Uh, but before we start uh, talking a little bit about that, do you want to tell folks a little bit about yourself, a little, little bit about the board game, and and just kind of give get people up to speed on uh, who you the are general... and, and the board game itself? Yeah, the general rundown. Sure. sure. Um, I'm Martin Takaichi. I'm uh, working with Free League, making all kinds of stuff for them, really, or with them. But but uh, primarily right now, we're going to talk about Tales from the Loop, the board game, <clears throat> of course, based on the works of Simon Stolenhag and uh, his like vision of the 80s, uh, which is just like the 80s where I grew up. Actually, I mean, I grew up, you, the towers behind me, they're not there anymore, but um, I it, it's not it's you know a few kilometers that way uh, basically uh where his uh, works take place uh and i have friends who grew up over there so i used to go with, visit them and everything it's, it's very much like you know close to home anyway um so yeah i'm making for the most part board games and a few rpgs things for free league and uh it's fun to finally have it in release and you know in stores for you guys to to grab and play it's uh it Let's uh, let's just kind of show it on screen. We can show it off because it's in the web store. If folks are interested in picking this game up, it is available in the. In the I think I put the link to the to the web store in the in the chat in the description of the video. If not, I'll put it there later. Uh, but you can go to freelypublishing.com and find it in the web store there. Uh, let's let's just bring this up because it is just a really really awesome looking board game. There we go. There yeah. we go. Uh, it is uh, one to five players. It's co-op. Yep. Got some some amazing miniatures. And uh, oh. you want to tell if folks are familiar with the, the RPG, will, will they uh, be uh, will they find some similar uh, things with with the board game? They will. Uh, that was actually one of the things we because when when we started talking about the, we were, that we would like to make a. a a board game based on Tales from the Loop. Um, our first in instinct was to just okay, so we'll make something similar to the role playing game, but in, in a board game format. That was like our first instinct. But then we kind of went back around and we kind of thought about, well, we could do something else. I mean, we could do uh, magnetrine shipping game of economics, where you kind of <laughs> push like freight ships across the globe or something like that. But of course, in the end, we went back to like, no, okay, we want to catch the kind of uh, Goonies kind of style, kids on bikes, Stranger Things kind of vibe, uh, where you ride around on the countryside and discover strange robots and machines and dinosaurs um, to really bring that kind of, you know, familiar feeling to it. Uh, sure. So it's been a fun process to to bring that to life. Uh, 
So this this board game has uh, miniatures and it also has uh, was it four four scenarios if I'm not mistaken right? No, it's 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 seven actually. Uh, Is there seven? Uh, yeah. Okay. In the, it started out four, but then through uh, through the Kickstarter stretch goals, which of course I mean I, I'm guessing some of you watching actually helped us unlock. Uh, we managed to push it up to seven scenarios and one additional kind of sandbox scenario, which is a bit uh, shortened and a bit more open That's and more right. random. So it's it's really enriched the game, I must say, to to be able to get the funding we did. It really helped yeah. us bring in some extra writers and stuff. So, so there's there's six pre pre made adventures, and then there's that seventh mode is like a, a you can create your own scenarios. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, sorry, yeah, I said seven and eight. I mean six and seven. Uh, but yes, it's kind of. Um, uh we call it the mystery island scenario and it's it's basically it it's similar each time you set it up but then depending on what happens in scenario and what cards you draw it, it turns out in different ways and it's meant to be to be able to like a stand in if you don't want to run uh, a full scenario which might take a little longer time you can play this one instead and it's also a, a bit more sandboxy in a way you you can um you can like pick and choose what machines you want to use and stuff like that. So it's it's a bit more open and free. Uh, since some people, I mean, uh, I think the scenarios in the game are fairly replayable. You can play, even though you know the basic story after you played it the first time, you can play it, I mean, a few more times at least, or maybe even more times than that. I did <laughs> and still enjoy them because the, the challenge of the game is not only like, you know, the, the dopamine hit of drawing a new card and be like, oh, it's also just like, what happens on the board and how fun is it when I need to go and pick up my, you know, nephew's dog or something when the others are going on an adventure. Um, so, uh, so yeah, we, but still, we wanted to have something extra as well to not only these like, you know, like ready-made stories, but also some, some one, at least one of these like more random things that you can kind of pull out and just see what happens. I love that. I love it. Uh, how hard was that uh, to create the like kind of the mode where folks can create their own uh, scenarios? Because I'm assuming that it was that was because if I remember correctly, that was something that was unlocked, you know, yeah. during the Kickstarter. Uh, so you kind of had your mechanics and your your kind of your plans in place. Is yeah. it, was it was it kind of difficult to to, to um, create a, a free form type of scenario situation for for players? In this in this particular instance, we actually have uh, Rikard Antroya to, to thank for this because he and he of course Rikard has been doing writing for Coriolis and uh, he's written adventures for Tales of the Loop. He's one of our like go to freelancers for for uh, adventures of the of those kind of fields and stuff. Uh, so we at the end the tail end of the production we brought him on as uh, to develop a few of the scenarios because you know we wanted to need more of them. Uh, and Nils Hintze who also has written large part. Well, he's written Tales on Loop for one, but he also came up with some of the basic structures for the scenarios. And then we, me and Rickard, we kind of took those and developed those scenarios to, to you know, put them into card format and you know, like make sure the mechanics all worked. And then, like, just we had talked about this thing that we would make a, like a sandbox mode, as we called it then. And then just one day, Rick and he was like, well, oh, you know, this other day I was just tinkering and I put together this like sandbox mode. I think it actually kind of works. What do you say? And then we had a look and it did. And it was like, yeah, okay. So you just did this. <laughs> so that was really like a, a very nice surprise. And thank you, Rick. And you did a great work there. Yeah. That's very cool. That's very yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. Of course, we we know that uh, you've mentioned some of the folks that, that helped uh, design and help write uh, some of this game, uh, and and contribute to this game. Now, of course, we know that this this board game is built on or is, is based around Simon Stallenhog's uh, mm -hmm. art. Um, how much involvement did you did did uh, he oh, have with Simon this? himself? Yeah, Simon himself. Were you did you kind of come up with the scenarios and then throw them over to, to Simon and be like, yeah, this is what I've got, or or was it something that, that he was just like really just kind of amazed that that you know, the, the people were designing a board game based on his art, you know, to begin yeah, with. Yeah, more of the latter. Because, okay. I mean, Simon, he's such a fun guy because he uh, he always enjoys, like, watching us work. He's like, wow, sure. that's so cool. You made this big book and you made this. Wow, that's really cool. I mean, I remember the first time when he saw the miniatures, he was like, well, what's this? And then he took a picture and put on Twitter. Like, we hadn't really shown them up. He, he was like, he just leaked our miniatures. Uh, uh, but but he's also, so I mean, he enjoys it really much. He really loves seeing us work in it, but he also um, 
uh, he he kind of I think he don't really want to like dilute uh, his own vision of, of mm-hmm. the world he created by by like con- consuming what we create. So he kind of want to keep his idea and his vision pure. And then he kind of you know he he more or less lets us do not not whatever we want, but almost he kind of likes. Of course, he takes a look at look at it. He's like, yeah, this seems okay. This seems fine. And he trusts us to do something that's in the style. Uh, that he likes. So, uh, he, of course, he's seen everything and, you know, okayed everything, but he's not been involved in, in actual creation of the game. Okay. Uh, and, we, of course, now and then it's like, I remember, for example, for the uh, for the watchdogs, the, the, like, bipedal things with a big light at the front. Yeah. Those, I mean, those weren't, they hadn't been detailed before. Uh, so we kind of had to figure out okay what well, what are these things like what, what are they used for and then obviously there seem to be some kind of tracking machine so okay we're gonna we're gonna we'll go with that and then we we kind of di- went a different direction so we wrote some a little backstory for them and things like that and then we had to check with with simon because like okay so this thing on the front is this a lamp or is this like a gun what is it and he's like yeah because we had, we think it looks like a lamp what do you say it's like mm, i guess so yeah i guess it's a lamp <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, he's very like you know relaxed and kind of free flowing, but uh, but he also wants to to not uh, get too much of our thinking into his head, basically. Right, right. Oh, that's very yeah. cool. Um, of course, uh, this there's there's been all sorts of different media for uh, Tales from the Loop. There's the the art, the art book, the RPG, the board game, and of course there's the TV show yeah. uh, that the the series there that was on uh, it's on Amazon here in in the states. Uh, I can't remember what the exact timeline was for for, yeah. for the, this. But were you able to like take any inspiration from the TV show for your <laughs> for this board game design? It's because uh, the series had premiered just uh, let's see if it was just before the Kickstarter launched or just after. I can't quite remember, but it was you know within a week of the Kickstarter launch. And of course, that's something that we kind of planned, or, or rather, we had this general window and then we were lucky when amazon uh, announced that they would actually release the show as well during that time so we kind of, we kind of slightly adjusted things and be like okay this is good um so but uh, the, the core of the game has not been inspired by the show because we hadn't seen it then we had we had got some a few hints from simon because he had been to the production and kind of looked at things and he was like oh it looks kind of cool i mean it looks like my stuff so okay um but apart from that, <laughs> I, I love it because any one of us would be like so excited. Yeah, I can, I can see Simon just be like, "Yeah, it's pretty cool." Like he's such a nice guy that he's just yeah, like, hey, yeah, hey, hey, yeah. Hey, really, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah, I like it. It looks like you know, it looks yeah. like the things that I drew, and it's like, yes, I, well, I hope so. Um, but uh, but then of course it premiered, and it was, I mean. I really like the show, but it's quite different from the from the vibe we're going for. So this is a bit more melancholy and slightly dark. You know, it's mm, not really like absolutely. a happy kid story. It's it's more of a, an adult kind of drama in a way. Um, uh, so, but then of course, I mean, we did take some inspiration from it uh, for especially for writing extra scenarios. Like for example, uh, the runaway scenario with which features the. Uh, um, What's his name in the show? I can't remember. The, the guy who gets... Yeah, exactly. There we go. Uh, the guy who... I won't spoil anything, but is associated with this machine. <clears throat> uh, so when Rick had, he took on to write the scenario, he kind of took some inspiration from the from the Amazon show. So you can... There's like uh, bits and pieces here and there, uh, but uh, it's mostly just inspiration from, well, you know, my own or our own childhoods and uh, and the RPG and of course the art book. It's always like you can always go back to the art book uh, because Absolutely. there's so much stuff there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so this this game not only has a uh, has a massive uh, you know release for the for the base the board game for the core core board game, but there's also two expansions. One we just threw up on the on the uh, on the screen there, so everybody could take a look at it, uh, which is called the, the Runaway. Uh, it gives you a new uh, new scenario to play out, and it comes with a new new mini. Uh, yep. We should also before we get too far along, we should also mention that there are two versions of this of this game. There's the standard version, and then there's the deluxe version. Um, I believe the deluxe version is only available through our web store. It's not uh, yes. Um, since uh, I mean the the only the only that's also worth mentioning the only difference is that the deluxe version has the pre-painted uh, professionally painted machines which from Dust Studios which are phenomenal I mean they're they're so good I, pre-painted miniatures you're used to kind of being 
slightly dodgy, but you know, it's like it's okay. They're not bad, but these are actually, I mean, they look really good. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's the only difference. And uh, since they are hand painted, uh, it's kind of difficult to put it re in retail because the the supply chain is fairly different. And, and the, so, so yeah, we only have the the deluxe version on our web store, uh, and uh, we're unsure we'll see if it might be that it kind of we, we're unsure if it's going to get uh, reprinted or not it's unlikely i'll say so if you really want those prepaints it might be wise to jump on it now because it's like ugh, yeah it's, it's unsure if it'll get uh, ever reprint, reprinted or not is is the the supply for the deluxe edition because the deluxe edition was was kind of like a, like we said it's kind of a kickstarter thing so it was i, I assume that that we ordered Extra copies to fulfill yeah. the, the Kickstarter products and the projects, and then we had extra copies left over. Left yeah, over. it's basically we, exactly it's basically leftovers, basically. Uh, and I mean, I I could see that maybe sometime in the future, maybe we, I mean, depending on how things go, we could maybe do another print run of those with a you know the hand paints and everything. But right. it's it's a completely different kind of thing. You have to it takes longer time, and well, you know, it's it's more requirement more. So my suggestion would be to, uh, you know, if you're thinking about ordering it, you might want to jump, jump on it fairly soon just because you yeah. know, the, the supply would probably be limited as well because uh, it won't be as, as large of a batch that we produce than, uh, than the, the general release uh, copies. So Yeah. And of course, I mean, if you like pay, painting minis. For all, I mean, go for oh, it. Oh, absolutely, version. absolutely. You can just have fun there and be like, oh. I've got so many minis to I've, my minis <laughs> backlog. Martin is crazy. I, I, you know, anytime I yeah. paint just a little extra, you know, a little bit more of a premium and get some really nice professionally painted. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm I'm consider. the same way. Yeah, it's I'm the same way. I have my plastic and lead mounted. You know, it's it's who I enjoy it, but it's too big. <laughs> so let's let's talk a little bit about uh, there is a second uh, expansion that uh, that we released along with the with the the, uh, uh, the runaway yeah. expansion and this one is the inv invasive species uh, uh, minute, minute scenario. <laughs> yeah. Ugh, can't seem to get it out. With the uh, but, Yeah, it comes with uh, it comes with that beautiful uh, beautiful miniature and, and uh, another scenario to play out. So yeah. yeah. This was actually this is inspired by uh, of course Simon's a big dinosaur he loves dinosaurs oh yeah so you can't really a make a, dino a Tales from the Loop uh, board game without dinosaurs I feel <laughs> no it would have felt really strange not to bring in a dinosaur because I mean we had this idea from the start that maybe we could like we ne yeah we had an idea from the start that we would make the game without dinosaurs and just put machines in the in the game and like everything and then we would but we would still make a dinosaur and we would put it like inside the the tray so if you lifted up the tray it would be there like a fun little present for you with some cards like a secret scenario just okay. i mean it was a crazy idea but that was like the initial idea and then we could no oh, that's that, that's too weird i mean all the <laughs> people who won't do that and just miss it we can't do that so in the end we decided to okay we'll put it as an expansion but we had this <laughs> slightly weird idea there but no i love it i love it maybe uh, next time yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, let's uh, if if folks have any questions for Martin in, in the chat, let us know. We'll, we've already got some there. Uh, we'll bring them up. But if you have any others, let's uh, we'll get to them here. Uh, Patty wants to know. Whoops, uh, where did I go? Right here. Patty wants to know any board games that in, that uh, the Tales from the the Loop board game was inspired from. Oh yeah, I mean. Um... A lot of them. <laughs> As I, I play a lot of board games, and I play well. I play a lot of games, full stop. I mean, really any kind of game. So of course, uh, lots of different kind of inspirations. <clears throat> I think maybe one of the uh, one of the ones that I think is like the most prominent, maybe might be the uh, um, how the diary works, so like the the branching storyline, because mm -hmm. that was introduced in a very similar way in uh, Arkham Horror Third Edition. Um, and uh, I, I didn't. The third edition, I was like, I, I thought it was fine. Arkham Horror was fine, but it's not. It wasn't really my kind of game. But I thought that kind of implementation of of the branching narrative of the kind of choose your own adventure was very, very clever. So it was. It felt like we need something like that. So why not just you know borrow that kind of mechanic here? Uh, and then of course, I mean, there's so much uh, di different kind of inspiration from all over. Um, we have the time cubes that are like I mean there are many games with with those kind of things but like we had uh, been playing Conan quite a bit uh, for before starting the design of this game and we we're like yeah maybe we should use something like this and then it's it changed a lot during <clears throat> 
during production design, of course. So in the end, it, it's not as similar as it as it started out. But it's when starting out the design, it, it's quite. Um, I find it's like reassuring to just pick almost like ready-made, uh, well, like already designed components from other games, just put them together and see how they kind of feel and how they work. And sure. then you can like slowly tweak things and like remove things or completely change things, but just to, you know, get started with something. It's, it's like a bit of a, uh, you know, one of those rocket backbones kind of things. And then when you're ready to launch, you just boop, and you remove what you don't need and then you have your own stuff thing going, um, but uh, but yeah, and of course uh, there's a little bit of like stuff like pandemic. There's uh, mm-hmm. uh, there, I, there's 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 a lot of in, of different things in there in it. Um, yeah, and of course uh, there's uh, quite a bit from the role playing game as well. Sure. Um, we wanted to for a while there that we had this idea of. of keeping it even closer to jrpg with <clears throat> things like the same kind of attributes and things uh but we did also or i felt anyway that we wanted to we don't want to uh, model them too much we want to keep this similar but separate in a way so it feels like its own thing in a way and not 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 just like a like a the rpg on a board right, uh, right. and i think uh, yeah the different tags and things help with that excellent uh, Terrier Halo asks, uh, "Will you update the rulebook with the errata clarifications, or, or on a separate page?" Yes. Uh, will we release the rule rulebook as a PDF? Yes. Yeah, that's happening this week. It's just there's a few things that we we going to uh, update. It not not really rules related just yet, but a couple of other things, just like production issues. Uh, but yeah, it's going up this week, so so it's coming. And of course, we're keeping an eye on uh, things for the errata. We do know there's. Uh, one or two cards that need uh, that we have updated. Uh, we have will release like PDF files for those who want to print things to to put in their little um, uh, sleeves. So we want to, of course, keep you updated with that thing, uh, which is you know always like uh, frustrating when you find them. But it's it's the process of making games. You always find something. Absolutely. So, yeah. Um, he also makes uh, they also make a comment about uh, Board Game Geek uh, having the files available on there. I'm sure we'll we'll pass that along to uh, the folks that are. Are you the one that uh, updates the uh, puts the, the yeah, PDF on, it's, on uh, available? It's probably uh, yeah. It's, I'm probably gonna be the one okay. that does it. So when I'm, when it's ready, I'm gonna be there and upload it to Board right. Game Geek as well. Sure. And of um, course, on the on our site as well, it's gonna be on the download section. That's another thing that, that I'll mention that uh, if folks are uh, if you pl- if you've played uh, Tales from the Loop the board game and, and you really enjoy it make sure to go rate it on uh, Board Game Geek and oh, let, yeah. let folks know because that's a uh, it's a big uh, uh, a big site to help uh, we get word out and there is also a uh, Tales from the Loop uh, uh, Facebook group that has been really uh, excited about seeing this uh, board game release so if you're a ta- uh, fan of that uh, of, of Tales from the Loop in general just uh, you might want to uh, join that group as well yeah and then there's forums we have we have uh, Facebook uh, or not for, we have uh, website forums as well on 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 freelypublishing.com so yeah there's plenty of uh, plenty of places to, to connect with folks that uh, that is and I've seen some people really already started designing their own scenarios, which that's is, great. Uh, that's really cool. Yeah, so I'm, I need cool. to I need to print those to try and you know, because I know all the scenarios. I mean, some I know better than sure. others because depending on if I design them or not. But but I, just to you know have a scenario can be completely new and play it. That's exciting. So yeah, I need to check those out. <laughs> Uh, Fenhorn has a question, and we were going to kind of ah. bring this up, bring this up a little bit uh, in, in, in in this chat anyway. Uh, future expansion, Boulder City map. It's they say uh, it'd be complicated, I guess, since some of the cards yeah. don't work. But that kind of brings up uh, any kind of future, any ideas for future plans or, or potential plans, I should say, for mm. for this uh, for this line. But uh, that's it's it's actually it, that's another thing we we considered during during the design of the game. Like, could we have a double sided map? <clears throat> and of course, I mean, we could have done that, but again, the problem comes not. We, we could have just, you know, done a double set map with the same kind of spaces on it, um, but it would be kind of weird because the cards wouldn't work. And right. we, we, I mean, potentially could you could do what we do in the role playing game where we have these dual settings where each like NPC character have two names, the Swedish name and the the American name, but. Uh, it 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 kind of works in an RPG because you have plenty of space, but on tiny cards, it's it's not really an option. So unfortunately, this time we uh, we we just kind of dropped that. But uh, it's certainly something to keep in mind for the future. I mean, it would be cool. 
Yeah. <laughs> it would be cool. That would be cool. That would be yeah. Cool. Uh, have you have you had any thoughts of uh, what uh, what you want to do with with future plans? Of, like uh, that, if you know, would you like to see more, more more scenario packs like uh, like the uh, the runaway and 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 so on? It's yeah. I mean, that's an option. That I guess that would be like the the simplest option, right? To to right. just uh, make a few more scenarios. I mean, there's always more stuff you can tell, right? And there's room for there's always more machines because you know Simon he just keeps making them. Um, but then there's also, <clears throat> the, I guess the big thing is is things from the flood. Like, should we make right, was... uh, 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 like a big expansion or should, like a standalone expansion, maybe like a separate game? Should they be combinable? Should there be a legacy aspect? Ooh, there's, you know, ideas and thoughts. We haven't really, I mean, nothing is decided yet, but we, of course, like, it is something we're thinking about. It is something we, it would be fun to do. It's just, you know, if it fits in the schedule and everything, and uh, looking at how well this game does and stuff like that, absolutely, yeah, yeah. it definitely... would be fun to bring it to the nineties and also get the kind of, you know, the slightly darker edge of of uh, things from the flood with a creepy machine plague and stuff. Absolutely, absolutely, I'm I'm definitely on board with that for sure. <laughs> uh, Terrier Halo asks, uh, "Mutant Year Zero board game." When? <laughs> oh, my friend! How I wish I could tell you. Um, I, there's, we have some ideas and some plans for things. I just, you, you know, keep keep your eye on on our website. There might be something in the future. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, uh, and then they have a follow up question. This is a great question for you. Uh, your top three or so board games that you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Oh, that's a good one. I mean, it's uh, yeah. I, I that's it. I mean, just nailing it down to, to three. That's more or less impossible. I can just like pick a few that I really like, or like that I keep coming back to maybe. And I have a few. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's hard because ah. I, with me, it like changes so often. Like I, yeah. I, I go through. I go through. Of course, you know. Y- it's you get we're in such a, an age right now where where board games we we just live in in, in this time where where there's board games being released almost every week so you get excited about one and then another one gets comes along and get excited yeah. about that one it's oh, hard yeah. to, like you go oh, through, yeah. you, you go through phases where you're really excited about certain games yeah there's i mean for sure the the whole thing I, i've been trying to kind of step away from the cult of new but still it's even so it's so difficult there's so much good design and just beautiful design coming out mm. these days but let's see if i can like three okay so let's see i'm gonna i'm gonna grab some of the like um like evergreens that i always enjoy playing okay let's start with the uh, uh, like twilight imperium which wow. is okay i haven't played it for many years now actually it's been probably 10 years since i last played i haven't played, it, played the last edition it's horrible but uh it's one of those games it, i mean it, it, it's 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 not a perfect game at all it has many like weird interactions that weirdness but i always 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 enjoy playing it even even if you're like it's like losing badly or slightly or whatever you can just it's just like okay i'm obviously not going to win the game so what should i do well i should just okay i'm gonna you know construct my own little narrative scenario in my head and be like okay so i'm gonna yeah i'm gonna I'm gonna invade this guy and if i manage to take his planet then i win in my brain uh so i gotta put that one in there and maybe what else do we have i think um Oh, that's another FFG game, though, but still, Android Netrunner. Okay, um, yep. Rest that's in peace, game. but it's yep. uh, it's such a good game. Um, what else do we have? Oh, I know, Sekigahara, the uh, from GMT Games of the uh, the like the main events of the Sengoku Jidai, the Japanese medieval period, where they kind of had these big battles, and uh, it's incredibly tense. I mean, every it, it plays out fairly quickly. The rules are. <clears throat> I shouldn't say play, well. It could play out quickly, but it doesn't because you sit for like for ten minutes. But no, I can't really. But the the rules are quite easy. Yeah, it's quick to learn. It's everything block based, and but then it's it's so brilliant. It's like every little decision, every little move, you have to be like weigh things up, and it's you know it tears on your brain in a good way. So yeah, I'll we'll say those three for now. Nice. This time, nice. I'll three others next time. Yeah, absolutely. When you have, we'll ask you if your next, your favorite three of the next. Yeah, yeah that could be like a recurring theme. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, 
Todd just just ordered the game two hours ago. Well, thank you so Boy, much. Well, thank you. Appreciate yeah, it. I hope you li- enjoy it. It's a, it's a heavy like it, that box is not light. I'll, yeah, I'll say it like there's a lot of material in that box. Yeah, yeah, especially I mean there's quite a bit of cards that always you know that's a bit of weight, and then the the double sided or the dual layered uh, player boards they're quite heavy. I mean they're really. I remember when we first got them, it was like wow, this is like massive. Um, and of course, and that's another thing. Just making this game, I was also something that I was really like adamant about on from the start. Like we, I, I want to help design the the tray, the, like the insert, because in so many games, it's uh, it's there to keep things in in place while you ship the game. And once it's in play, uh, you know, customers' hands, it's like, yeah, what are you gonna do with this? I'll just throw it away. Yeah. Um, but of, I mean, now you can never. You can never design the perfect tray, but at least try to make something that's actually usable and, and feels like you can you can keep it because it, it kind of works. Uh, so one thing was to to have space for all the expansions. So you can put if you buy the expansions, you can put them in a base game, and then just throw away the little box. And of course, if if you if that's like tears at your heart, don't do it. Keep the box, but you can if you want. Uh, and also that you can like pick things out and there's this uh, little lid to keep things in place and stuff like that. So, and I think uh, with the help from, again, Dust Studios, they, we kind of, I had, I drew up this like strange, you know, ugly diagram, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe this works. And uh, they come back and like, yeah, this kind of works. We should do this and this and this instead because this won't work. And I was like, okay. So together we kind of come to this uh, solution that I think actually, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, it, 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 I was really impressed with it. I, you know, it's, Happy to it's hear one it. thing. That's one thing that, like you said, you, sometimes those those game inserts just uh, the the board game inserts are just not yeah. not well designed, and, the, and they're just there to just kind of throw away afterwards. But no, that's, yeah. this was definitely something that, that you can hold on to quite a bit. The other thing that, that you mentioned just just briefly, uh, briefly was uh, the the player boards. Mm. I love when games have double layered player boards. More, yeah. please, please, <laughs> companies, uh, yeah, let's, and, and just just the freely team at home. Like any future games, let's let's do that from from uh, you know going forward because uh, there's nothing better than, than double layered. Uh, no, yeah, games. definitely. I it's that's also one one of the things that I decided earlier that no, we we we're gonna have that because it's just and of course I mean we wasn't we were never like quite entirely sure we would be able to it was another stretch goal that we managed to unlock but but it was really like we need we we can't put this too high it has to be like fairly low stretch goals because i really want this <laughs> and of course yeah we blew past that that was, that was okay but yeah it really um helps yeah. i mean it, it helps like physically right you, you know oh, yeah. to, to more about checking things but th- that it also has this like it, it just makes it feel better it's like it's nice and sturdy and like boop, boop, boop. it's yeah it's nice it helps with the durability it helps with the like some of the fiddly like it doesn't yeah. make your, the game as fiddly you know you can and it just makes things a little more clear that uh, okay yeah, yeah exactly you know yeah. you have to place something on your player board and then you kind of knock the table and your pieces kind of go all over you know they kind of yeah i've been there we still been. have like uh, <laughs> nightmares <laughs> is is there anything that uh, that you had to admit from from this from designing the game that, that you kind of wish that you was there anything like towards the end of the the design process where you're just like oh I really want to keep this in but uh, uh, it's uh, yeah um, I mean in the end uh, the, the, of course there are a number of things that we we ended up cutting but uh, that was for the better but still I mean some of them are easier to cut than others sure. uh, like for example for for a while there we had a kind of general event card so if you had your character go to somewhere where there wasn't you know anything special going on if if there wasn't a machine there or there wasn't a rumor or uh, you know some kind of uh, scenario thing going on it was just you know a regular space and just ended up there and it was boring nothing happened then you get to draw from a like a general event uh, deck kind of thing which will split up between uh open and uh, and uh, closed areas uh and that was kind of fun i remember for example nils uh, one of the colleagues here for some reason he really liked that deck he always like oh i get the draw from the deck and he pulled it out it's like oh i met a okay i met a homeless person and but i can i can take him and give him coffee okay nice i give him coffee uh, so it's a, like small little like super small stories um but 
it was it kind of was a nice little vibe there. You kind of get some like random back background information basically, <clears throat> but it also kind of ended up slightly diluting the experience a little bit. So in the end, we we, we decided to cut that. But it was it was a little bit like, mm, well, I did like you. I'm sorry. And then you had to take it out, you know, on the back of the shed. And, yeah. <laughs> This is terrible. You've convinced me to buy the oh, deluxe I'm... version. Shame on you. <laughs> I'm, I'm so sorry. Sorry. I, I will say that if you are going to buy the deluxe version and you can afford it, buy the big bundle because it's only like fifteen dollars more or something than in oh, yeah. U.S. dollars for 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 us. And then you get the both. You get the both prepainted the expansions, and uh, it's it's definitely worthwhile to uh, to pick those up because uh, it's just just for a little bit more you get you know a couple more scenarios and some really great minis for for uh, yeah just... yeah the bundle is good value i think um and i think uh, yeah in general i think the the expansions i i was uh, happily surprised on how mu how much we managed to you know press the prices on those ones uh usually at this price level it well i mean i'm generalizing but but often looking at other games uh, at this price level if you get an expansion it's it's like a deck of cards or something but here you right. get a deck of cards and a miniature and a thing like a board for the yeah. future. So, so yeah, I'm happy we managed to keep those down because they really add to the experience. Uh, let's see here. Terry Hillo says, uh, I, I got the standard version. Those minis looked like yeah. they would be too much fun to paint. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. for sure. Uh, I'm, I mean, of course, again, mountain of plastic and lead and stuff. I still have mine unpainted here, but uh, yeah, I have this whole uh, idea. I'm going to, you know, go to town with, you know, doing weathering and chipping and stuff like that to really make them like, look like the machines have been standing out in the rain in, in Iakura in, you know, all winter. That's, yeah, whenever I get around to it, you know. Absolutely. This is a great question. Uh, ask, they're, they're asking, uh, how is the game solo or is it better to play with more players? <laughs> We know solo um, solo gaming is is a big thing right now with yeah. of course not being able to be out in public with mm. the you know in large groups and and uh, so so yeah you want to you want to answer sure how the solo yeah plays? Uh, that's also something that we wanted to um, that we wanted from the beginning that we wanted to be able to play it uh, solo and not necessarily to have like an entirely new kind of mechanism for for solo play there wouldn't be any bots or anything i mean the game is a bot in, in itself um so so the, the core idea is that when you play solo you simply play with two characters uh and apart from that uh it plays out <clears throat> Uh, yeah, it plays out like just like if you had two actual players there instead of just uh, two characters. Uh, so that plays out the same. But of course, in my view, and I mean, I've enjoyed it quite a bit solo because, you know, testing and everything. That's <laughs> played a lot solo. But also, I think that one of the, the most fun things of the game is when you kind of sit there with your friends and you have these weird ideas of different things you want to do during your turn. And, and then it turns out that your friend has to go to the grocery store or something and i mean those kind of small stories are always fun and all and also the kind of when you whenever you manage to bring you know a, a combo when you're like oh but i have a lighter oh you do because you know i have the hairspray could we maybe yeah and then you do it and then you succeed and i mean those that that's more fun when you're playing with friends than solo i'd say Absolutely, I'll tell you. We had an early advanced copy of uh, of the deluxe deluxe version oh, at yeah. PAX Unplugged, and uh, after after hours, we we the group of us uh, at the the. Fr the, the booth and, uh, and some of the, the attendees, we all kind of get together. One of the hotel lobbies kind of, we kind of, kind of wanted to make it, we kind of put it on the uh, a quiet because we didn't want to pull, <laughs> we didn't want to create a big, a big distraction because there were, there were a lot of folks that wanted to play this game. Uh, and so we, we kind of went to this quiet table. Oh, you in, kept the download in the corner in the dark. And we, we we got to play it uh, we got to play it out and I'll tell you what that was definitely a thing as soon as we got like certain combos they're like yes we got this we're gonna let's yeah, put yeah, this together exactly, yeah. and it was yeah it was it was a blast and it, we tried That's to keep to it quiet that. but uh, we we were definitely attracting more and more folks uh, around us so it was it was kind of neat to kind of yeah. show it off that way too yeah yeah I've noticed that. Um... When we're on consoles and stuff, and we have we have uh, the the game uh, displayed, <clears throat> it it tends to draw quite a bit of ice, and I think it might be it, it's fairly colorful, which is, is compared to many of our other games that are a bit more you know a bit darker or a bit like more subdued. If you look like an alien, or I mean Martin Grip, he, he's amazing. 
uh, but he also he tends to he's, he likes the slightly darker tones, right. uh, which makes this game what you're gonna put is like, blah, it's like a, a like a, what's this? It's a pile of skittles. Oh no no no. Okay, it's a, it's a board game, and then they <laughs> kind of interested. So it was interesting, and I, I guess uh, it it kind of stands out uh, even from afar. I think. Yeah, it does. It does a great job. It's got great, great table presence. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. it's good to hear. Thanks. <laughs> uh, Terry Hairless says, "I figure we will play it with four players first time, and that'll probably give it a try solo some weekend. Then it's just me and the dog. He's very nice, but horrible at board games. I, I, he's got a great hair. Yeah, like he's very festive, though. Yeah, he's festive. He's happy. And that's yeah, little, look at that. with him there. Yeah. No, but I think four plays. I think for my, I think uh, for me, I love. I think three or four plays is my. I think my favorite play count because you can. You're when you when you got, get up to like five players, that can also be a lot of fun because it's so much. But it tends to be you kind of crop off into different teams and and sometimes you kind of like I don't know what they're doing. They're over there or something. You know. Whereas if you're three or four, everyone is always like focused on what you're actually doing right now, and you need to cooperate more because uh, well, it's only three or four of you. Right. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think four is four is good. Four is good. Yeah. Uh, we played it with four. It was it was tremendous. It was it was a lot of fun. Yeah, very, <laughs> very much. Well, we are almost at uh, our forty. Well, we are at our forty minutes uh, that we had uh, set aside for this. Uh, Time flies. Have, have any more questions for for Martin? Uh, let us know in the chat real quick, and we'll we'll wrap up here shortly. Um, if uh, our folks are interested uh, in in picking this game up. I'm going to tell you right now that uh, you can go to freelypublishing.com and uh, let me just bring it up on screen and show folks that uh, there are two versions. Uh, there are, uh, let me go back here. Oops. Oh, nice names. <laughs> the, the standard version comes with, un, uh, with uh, unpainted minis uh, and it has a, yes, it's, it's about 76, 67 in US dollars. Um, and then uh, let's see here, the deluxe version I believe is about forty-five dollars more uh, than, uh, and it comes with, of course, with everything that uh, the, everything painted there that uh, you would like. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there we go, right there. And then if you really want to dive right in, you can get the uh, the big deluxe version, the bundle for it's one hundred forty-two forty-four uh, US uh, here. So. Uh, and that that's going to get you everything. And then, like like Martin said, if you get both expansions, you can put them all in in the the core box and uh, kind of keep it all compact. And you know, you might want to keep the the boxes in general anyway, but you don't have to. Let's put it that way. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I'm ruthless about my boxes. I try to. Oh, I you know, do. I I don't have the space anymore, <clears throat> but I I have uh, you know I I understand if you want to keep them. Absolutely. Um. That's a good question. Is Simon doing any more new books? Yes. What? Yes. Um, he's still... I, I can't recall what the next one is called. Do, 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 my bad brain. Oh, I can't recall. Uh, but yes, he's, he's doing a new book. And it's, I think uh, this is not really my area right now because I don't know the schedules. But I think it should be out this year, I think. Okay. Uh, but again, it's like it's not the same. It's the, uh, just like... Um, Electric State. It's it's a it's a different setting. It's a different world, but you're kind of uh, exploring something new. Is it's basically. not the, the labyrinth. It's not the it's uh, one, no. the one after the labyrinth. Yes, exactly. Interesting. Uh, so it's his like next. But of course, I mean, it, it's still Simon. So you'll have like uh, family landscapes and strange machines, and uh, this time rockets. Oh, nice, nice, very yeah. cool. Um, have you you've taken a look at uh, the labyrinth? I'm guessing. Oh yeah, for sure. Are, I, are the I, gears already churning for uh, for game design when you look at that book? Or yes, all right, all right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's uh, these days it's almost impossible to not look at something uh, if there's something like oh this looks cool, and then the brain is like, how can I turn it into a game? <laughs> So yeah, both labyrinth and of course like state there, there's uh, ideas and visions. We'll see what whatever comes from them, but but we do have you know ideas. Yeah. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Uh, Crimson Typhoon says uh, thank you very much for the stream. I think it has convinced me. Uh, I I hope you enjoy it uh, when you when you order. We appreciate that. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you do. Thank you to everybody that uh, that has joined us. Uh, Martin, 
I want to say thank you so much for for giving your time. I know it's much later there than it is here. It um, is. It and, is. Yeah, and and I, I greatly appreciate you staying up and and answering some questions. And we can celebrate together uh, your your big release, which is uh, along. You know, like you've been very busy. You've been on quite a few different projects for Free League, so <laughs> yeah. they're all kind of hitting all at once. So uh, yeah. you're a very very busy man. So uh, we great, greatly appreciate uh, you giving your time today for uh, yeah. For this. It's great. Uh, it's great to have this out in the wild now and be able to like. Whew, Okay, it's here. The, well, the fulfillment is done, and the ships and the containers, everything is like, yeah, oh, it's out. Okay, good. And of course, there's just a next thing to do, but still, this one is nice to have out there. And I hope, really, everyone, that you enjoy the game. Absolutely. Oh, Fenhorn says, thank you for a great game, Martin, and others. Thank you, Fenhorn. Also, thank you, Fenhorn, for you know keeping things straight on the Borgengi channel. Uh, sorry, the uh, the forum there and helping out with the questions. Thank absolutely, you. absolutely. Uh, if you appreciate uh, Martin giving his time, we appreciate it. If you put hit the like button down below, and that helps uh, get this uh, video in the stream uh, noticed. And uh, if you are a fan of, of this game and, and you're as excited as we are to have it out in the out in the uh, in the wild, feel free to let other folks know. If you your store, if you have a friendly little game store, you can mention that uh, it is available to uh, in distribution right now, and you can have them stock it and uh, have it on on their retail shelves. All right. That's going to do it for this stream. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, everyone. everyone. Be well, and may your dice rolls never have to be pushed. We'll see you next time. Bye Take now. care. Bye-bye.